Good morning, welcome back to the Broadcast Retirement Network. I'm Jeff Snyder, this is BRN AM for Monday, June 14th, 2021. And our top story today, Amazon weighs a push into physical pharmacies. Well, joining me now to discuss this and a lot more is Blake Dodge. She's a senior healthcare reporter for Business Insider. Blake, so great to see you. Thanks so much for joining us on the program this morning. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's great to talk with you and, and you know, for the, our audience's benefit, you really have a good uh, handle on what's going on at some of these technology firms and what's going on in healthcare. So you recently wrote a great story about Amazon and how they're looking to expand their footprint in healthcare. What can you tell us? Yeah, Amazon's really prioritizing getting into the healthcare industry, and it's really happening this year. Um, Amazon's sort of been a, a, a potential uh, disruptive threat to healthcare for a long time, you know, starting around maybe when they acquired PillPack, um, a pharmacy startup in 2018. But now we're seeing a lot of their ambitions kind of come to fruition and um, become public through business insiders reporting and others and also what they've announced. Um, at Business Insider, we're focusing a lot on Amazon Care, um, which is a combination of virtual and physical care. It's a medical care business. Um, Amazon started piloting that in 2019, just among its employees. And it would never really say like, you know, what it might turn into when it grows up. Um, we reported in December, Amazon Care actually had ambitions to serve the employees of other companies. And that's a roadmap um, to growing up in, in digital health and becoming a real business that, that we see startups take. They start with big companies, then health plans, and then potentially they, they sell medical care directly to consumers. Um, and Amazon announced recently that this program is available for Seattle based companies. Um, and in the summer, the virtual component of the program is going to expand to all 50 states And the in-person program is that's a little slower. It's more logistically complicated. It involves like sending nurses to, to people's homes. They're, they're not re ready to scale that nationally yet. They're going to focus on bringing that to Baltimore and the DC area. Um, the the other big component of Amazon's healthcare strategy is Amazon Pharmacy, um, and that's a more mature effort within Amazon. Again, starting with that 2018 acquisition of PillPack, um, and they're really trying to make the pharmacy experience just make more sense um, and become less tied to you know chasing down your your prescriptions and in brick and mortar locations. Um, they have a lot of benefits for Prime members. It really seems like a lot of the pharmacy strategy is tied to Prime. Like they offer healthy healthy discounts for, for Prime members when they don't pay with insurance, which is interesting. Um, and then we reported at Business Insider a couple of weeks ago, they actually are thinking about expanding into brick and mortar sites. Um, Whereas, you know, for a long time now, they've, their, their ambitions have been squarely sort of online. Um, you know, if we start to see Amazon pharmacy stores, you know, pop up down the street, um, that's, that's a potentially really disruptive move to Walgreens, Rite Aid, CVS, these, you know, retail stores that, you know, currently their, their advantage is their storefront. Yeah. And, and just to pick up on that point, I mean, just kind of stepping back a little bit, obviously you have been covering healthcare during the pandemic. I, you know, obviously I read Dispense, I talk to uh, your colleague Lydia Ramsey and follow what you all are doing. Um, we've, we've moved and shifted a lot to virtual health, but is it your feeling uh, just based on your coverage, <laughs> bless you, is it, is it your feeling based on your coverage that, um, you know, people still want to go to physical uh, doctor's offices, they want to kind of have this balance between going to a physical doctor's office, going to a physical 
pharmacy, being able to talk to a pharmacist or being able to talk to a doctor? Yeah, it's such a great question. And, you know, the, the pandemic has been key to getting telehealth companies off the ground. Um, whereas before, now telehealth is, is a household sort of name and phrase, whereas before it's like, what is, what is telehealth? Um, with the pandemic making, you know, the internet an important way to connect with physicians while the, the threat of becoming infected with COVID-19 was present. Um, however, it's the, you know, in-person care isn't going anywhere, obviously. And I think what's really interesting about the disruption we're seeing in the industry right now, not just from Amazon, also from Walmart, um, these, these really, really big companies are, um, they are taking a, what Walmart likes to call omni-channel approach to care. They think you need online and they think you need in person. And in some ways that's intuitive, um, but you know, the, the, the business model is really gaining traction in digital health. And the thinking is, well, what does a person need? Can we start with a bot? You know, can we start with a bot where they're discussing their symptoms? Can it be resolved with the bot? If not, can they start texting with a physician? Can the problem be resolved that way? If not, can it be resolved with a video visit? If not, can it, you know, be resolved by dispatching clinicians in into the home or at that point asking the person to come in for a visit? Um, and we're, that's, that, that seems to be, that's where Amazon is. That's where Walmart seems to be heading and quite a many, I mean, too, too many startups to, to mention have, have adopted that model or components of it. Yeah. And, and Blake, I mean, is it your feeling that people are, you know, people of all ages, not just my age, I'm, I'm middle-aged, uh, but people, my parents' age, people your age and younger, people are accepting of this, this move to digital, um, they they want to be able to you know it's a, it's that old tried and true hey i want it now i want to be able to get it now so if we can utilize digital maybe i have to go um online or have to go to a pharmacy to pick up certain goods or services but is it your feeling that, that people have just said okay i'm willing to do it this way and therefore the walmarts and the amazons have a clear advantage over uh you know as you said earlier the walgreens and the cvs's of the world yeah, I think people are accepting of, of digital and healthcare. In some ways, uh, healthcare has been so slow to come around to digital, right? It's like one of the few industries left where you do have to work out everything in person and fill out all this paperwork, you know, six different times before you can get anything done. So I think people are, are more than ready for digital. Um, and it's interesting you ask about the elderly because in some ways you can imagine digital and home care is more convenient for for people who are less mobile right it's it's probably easier for an older person for someone to come see them in their home than it is for for that person to get into to a clinic um i think people are more than ready i think there's also it's not just the pandemic that's accelerated the the adoption of digital tools in healthcare it's also just the fact that healthcare is so expensive, right? And people on high deductible plans, they're having to think about their options. And so that's that's sort of accelerated also a, a, a consumerism in healthcare. People are making choices in healthcare, even though for so long in healthcare, like choices in people, it's like that it's not really functioned that way and, and consumers haven't really been in control of their health. Now with, with the, the rising cost of, of high deductible plans, there's there's a, a sense of demand, right, for, for healthcare to make more sense um, and for it to, to to be at a reasonable cost, whether whether it's out of out of pocket or not. Well, Blake, I need to take a very quick break break. When we come back, we'll talk more about rising healthcare costs prescription drugs, and how these transactions might be able to help lower those costs. You're going to want to stay tuned right here on BRN AM. Tiger, 
Imagine a new television network that will make you richer, healthier, and in control of your financial future. This network is for the policewoman in Nashville, Tennessee, the baker in Dubuque, Iowa, the teacher in Lexington, Kentucky. We want to make the idea of savings and retirement culturally relevant. But what do you see as a defining issue of the midterms? Especially for the smaller businesses, I mean, they are the lifeblood of the American economy. Featuring exclusive interviews, current affairs, and docu-series. 33 yeah. years old, you retired early. The philosophy is money only matters if it helps you live a life that you love. But you gotta start thinking about retirement as soon as you get in. The Broadcast Retirement Network will drive very high engagement with premium partnerships. So this isn't retirement and savings for your parents or grandparents. This is for all Americans. And we're gonna change the way you think about money. Welcome to the next frontier of retirement and savings. This is BRN, the Broadcast Retirement Network. Are you stuck with a low credit score? A credit report and score that's causing you to be denied credit or pay higher interest rates than others for the same things? Then do what Terrence did and call Credit Repair for your free credit evaluation to help restore your credit. I started thinking about buying a new house and my score wasn't where I needed it to be. I called and spoke with one of the representatives and we just had a good conversation and I, I liked what he was saying. Just one call for his free credit evaluation was all it took to start back on the track to repairing his credit. I'm seeing the deletions and I'm getting the report so I know something's being done. It does make a difference to me. All it takes is one call to get started. Credit repair has given me a second chance to have a better credit score. Don't let a low credit score hold you back another day. Do what Terrence did and make the call for your free credit evaluation. Call 800-819-4152. That's 800-819-4152. Again, 800-819-4152. Welcome back. We're talking to Blake Dodge of Business Insider. Blake, thanks for staying with us this morning. Of course. Uh, so I want to pick up the, the conversation. We, we kind of ended our, our conversation in the first segment about prescription drugs, the costs associated with that, the costs associated around healthcare. Uh, Amazon and Walmart have had a great track record, particularly Amazon, of really lowering the cost, the cost of retail, the cost initially to buy books, the cost to buy goods and services. Now they're moving over, uh, they acquired Pill, Pill Pack and, and they're really making great strides in healthcare. What do you think that this does? Does this help lower those costs? You, you mentioned consumerism, all of us being a lot more engaged about what we're paying our providers, what we're paying for healthcare. What does this mean longer term for healthcare costs? Yeah, that's the key question. And it's we, you know, we don't really know because these large companies to date have as as motivated as they are to change healthcare, you know, they haven't yet. Um, Amazon in particular, right, started up Haven with JP Morgan and, and Berkshire Hathaway. And that was sort of their first attempt, right? Other than than Amazon Care to um work together, use the combined resources of the companies to come up with like a technology first way into this cost problem. Um, and Haven never really got off the ground. It disbanded last February without ever really landing on a strategy. Um, and that the, the, we, you know, big, big co companies who are not healthcare first struggle in healthcare. So that's something to bear in mind. Um, but I, I think it's a really fascinating part of this story that Amazon and Walmart in particular are coming into healthcare with the express intent of lowering cost. And you don't necessarily see that from the healthcare incumbents, right? Because <laughs> it's, it's not in their interest to do so. Um, Amazon Care and Haven 
really spun out of Jeff Bezos's personal frustration with the rising cost of healthcare among Amazon's more than 1 million employees, right? Because as a self-insured employer, it, it pays those people's bills. And so it has this sort of firsthand knowledge of, of just how ridiculous healthcare costs are in the US. It's a $3.8 trillion industry. And a lot of that is waste. Um, you know, it is not like that in, in other developed countries. And so these these companies, they're they're kind of taking it upon themselves to to make a difference where frankly the industry hasn't and, and frankly where the government hasn't. Walmart, on the other hand, you know, they 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 said a couple of years ago healthcare costs were their second biggest expenditure behind wages. Right. So that really kind of drives it home, like just how much of a problem this is. Walmart's customer base. Right. They're also not super high income. And so in getting Walmart health off the ground, which is it's sort of like Amazon care. It's sort of not um, it's primary care services uh, for transparent cash based costs a lot of the time uh, in clinics. But we're also seeing them get into telehealth. Um, they started that whole venture a little bit based on just surveys among their customers, again, not a high income group traditionally, who, who were asking Walmart to, can you help us with in, in healthcare? And it's where we're seeing Walmart roll out their clinics. You know, they're not in huge metropolitan cities. They're, they're in care deserts. Uh, Georgia, Arkansas, areas areas of Florida, there there's a seriousness in in Walmart's sort of mission to increase access to to care and, and lower the cost. So the jury is like totally still out sure. on whether these companies meaningfully lower the the cost of healthcare and provide that competitive pressure to incumbents, right? To to figure out a, a better way to, to reach consumers, but um, they are they are serious about it. it. It's not just lip service, like the cost of care is why they are in healthcare in the first place. Blake, what, how do you think the, you know, now, you know, we're kind of speculating here, but, and I don't want to put you on the, the spot too much, but, you know, how do you think the CVSs, the Walgreens of the world, the United Healthcare's, Anthems, et cetera, these are, you know, just to name a few of the big health insurers, how do you see them responding to this? I mean, does this, usually when you have someone come in to a market um, it, and drive change, it has a way of trickling down and impacting other areas of the market in, in, in terms of providing a response. What do you see potentially as a response from CVS and Walgreens and some of these insurance companies? Yeah, that's an interesting question. I don't want to get too out of my wheelhouse here, but like, I think something to keep in mind is that the the retail shops they are actually ahead in healthcare and you know it's it's this long standing kind of pattern with um Amazon coverage in healthcare with Walmart coverage in healthcare that you know Amazon and Walmart are the disruptors and then it's everybody else and while that's true you know, Amazon and Walmart are newcomers, right? Amazon Care only has a handful of clients. Walmart Health, I think, has about 20 clinics, right? So as much potential as these companies have to do something disruptive, it's really taking a long time, a long, yeah. long time for um, these programs to reach any kind of scale, right? Whereas just to take a CVS as an example, 10,000 storefronts, they own Aetna, a major health plan. And they also have hundreds of health hubs, which are not as compre comprehensive as Walmart health centers in terms of the services they offer, but which are effective for, you know, getting a prescription, like seeing a doctor when you're ill, getting vaccinated. Um, so I think still the, the competitive pressure on groups like CVS, Walgreens and Rite Aid is like, it's still a little bit theoretical. Um, and, you know, in, in some ways, I think CVS started preemptively disrupting itself um, quite a few years ago. Yeah, well, it's going to be interesting to watch. And look, the, one of the biggest expenses, you know, we're the Broadcast Retirement Network. We don't just cover 
retirement. But one of the biggest expenses, as you know, is healthcare when you're a retiree. And that means you need to save, you know, healthcare costs just keep going up for retirees. It means you're gonna have to save more. If you're a younger person now, you're gonna have to put more in your 401k, put more money away for to cover these healthcare costs. Blake, we're gonna have to leave it there. Great story. Really great to chat with you. And look, we look forward to having you back on the program again very soon. Yep. Thanks so much for having me, Jeff. It's been great. And that wraps up this episode of BRN AM. Have a topic of interest, someone you think we should talk to, drop us a line. And don't forget, for all the information in retirement markets, technology, personal finance, so much more, check out today's edition of our daily newsletter, The Morning Pulse. We're back again tomorrow for another edition of BRN AM. Until then, I'm Jeff Snyder. Stay safe, keep on saving, and don't forget, roll with the changes. Are you being audited? And do you owe the IRS $10,000 or more in back taxes? Is the IRS threatening to take more of your money? Don't fight the IRS alone. The Tax Doctor is here to help you negotiate your tax bill and reduce your stress. The IRS can freeze your assets and seize your bank accounts, but you can stop these IRS actions. The Tax Doctor will work with you using our years of experience to represent your case to help you get the best resolution under the IRS guidelines. Help is here to deal with the IRS to reduce your stress. We've handled thousands of cases, so we know what we're doing. If you owe $10,000 or more in back taxes, do not call the IRS alone. Call a Tax Doctor now for a tax emergency analysis. Call 800-224-6439.